really popular terms um, <clears throat> as it relates to animal foods, but I think especially chicken and eggs uh, are, uh, you know, these these terms that us animal activists just roll our eyes at every single time because we know the truth behind it and what it means. But terms like organic and free range and grass fed and pasture raised and uh, my favorite hormone free, which they finally can't actually put on the packaging, <laughs> like no added hormones, like hello. <laughs> Uh, but they could say that for a while, uh, hormone-free. Um, why are these terms uh, so dangerous? I think they give, so all of the terms you just named are marketing terms for the most part. They're, they're terms which are trying to convince people of the image that they want to have of how the animals are raised so that they don't think beyond the package where the animal has come from and the life and the suffering that the animal has had. Mm -hmm. And it speaks to the kind of better angel, angels of our nature, which is we want to do the right thing. We look at that package and we hope that that animal has lived a life on pasture under the sunshine, you know, foraging in the forest. That's what we want. That's what we hope for. And that marketing term is preying on those, yeah. those, that, that better angel of our nature. And it works because we don't want to stop eating something that's convenient and cheap and satisfies the protein needs that we have. We just, we just want to go to the grocery store and not think beyond that package. And they know that. And, and there's no regulation on these terms. So there's no way to know as a consumer that, and, you, and people don't know these things aren't regulated. So there's no way to know. So for example, a very popular thing to put on meat chickens is cage free. And people think this is great. They think, oh, this must mean the rest of them are in cages. Well, wake up call. No chickens are raised in cages for meat ever. This is just like saying the chickens are white or the chickens have two legs. It is a trick to make you feel better about what you're picking up off the grocery store shelf. Now, uh, just to be clear, egg laying hens Yes, at least in in a lot of places are in cages and slanted cages, and so their eggs will fall, and they have a different a different rate, and are they raised differently? Correct, and they're that is a, a and they're preying on that, right? They're preying on the market confusion around that. So that is where those animals are raised. The the laying, as I said, they've kind of been divided as they're almost like subspecies now, and they're different breeds, if you will, and they don't mix, and these ones for laying eggs are raised in cages unless it says cage free or that it has been regulated in some way. Mm -hmm. And it's totally different. And they perch and they're, they're a different shape. If you look at the two of them, you're like, these are not, how are these even related? They are cage free eggs are definitely a move in the right direction in terms of progress. Caged meat chickens don't exist. It doesn't exist. You, you've probably <clears throat> been on more of the, these uh, <clears throat> more chicken farms than well, us combined at least, and maybe all of our listeners combined. Um, so uh, the, the the organic term, I think, is the one that the conscious consumer really leans into the most in terms of believability. Like they really think that there's some really stringent standards around that. And we do know, um, and I know especially in, in dairy farms, uh, you know, it's it, the, the USDA, um, you know, Let's the farmer know that they're going to come check out their organic farm uh, in six months from now on February 7th uh, type of thing. For chicken farms and farming, um, what are some of uh, some of the, the situations that you've seen that that our listeners who maybe are eating organic chicken would be shocked by? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And I regularly have this frustration and so, but for history, there have been huge efforts by activists to try to transform the organic standard. And I was one of them who worked for a long time to, and I gave testimony and I wrote drafts of revisions, trying to make the organic standard mean something for animals. And we got a draft passed right before um, the new administration, Trump administration, it was passed, but then it was overturned. And it was a really low moment for the 
for the movement because we thought finally people are buying it. They're going to keep buying it. Let's at least make it mean something for animals. And we lost that battle. So, well, what was in we, the draft? I mean, what did, what did, what was, what, what did the it draft, say? right? The draft was, so a lot of people think that there's nothing meaningful for the animals in terms of outdoor access. Mm-hmm. And that's the key thing where people think that this means the animals will have a pasture. They don't have a pasture. Sometimes all they have is a concrete slab, like a patio that they might have a door on the side of the regulations are very um, loose and not meaningful to the animals. So whether they be cows or pigs or chickens, the outdoor access is abysmal and unused because it isn't sufficient for the number of animals. It isn't grass. It doesn't have to be the, it doesn't, it can have a roof on it so they don't even have to have sunshine. Uh, it can be a porch like setting. So that to me was one of the most fundamental tricks of organic that, that people thought the birds were fully outside the chickens, the pigs, the cows were fully outside and they're not. I mean, the other aspect are things like breed and space are not specified so they can be crowded, um, And, you know, I think that the thing is organic was in the United States has been created specifically for the environment. So it is good if you care about the environment because it thinks about the feed the animals are given and how that feed was raised and there's less pesticides being used and all of that, but it has nothing to do with the animals. In Europe, it's totally different. In Europe, the standard is a pasture-raised, free-range kind of standard, and it is regulated and it is meaningful. It's just in the United States, it's not. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.